All right, guys, here we go again. The Metro Atlanta Ham with video part two of the Yesu 857 Delta Doomsday Radio. We got a lot of questions. We, we got a lot of people that wanted to know the internal workings of this radio, the equipment that we're using, the antennas that we're using, and how the setup is all done. So today I'm going to take my time and we're going to go ahead and open up the radio, disassemble it, and show you guys what this radio is capable of doing. One of the things that I really want to illustrate is the MobiLink TNC3, the DigiRig Mobile, and how we're using it when we're out in the field. Because my main, my primary focus of operation is soda. And typically I do a lot of soda QRP, but I want to use this radio to take advantage of soda QRO opportunity. And one of those opportunities come from using APRS Droid. APRS Droid allows me to send locational data, as we mentioned in the first video. It also allows me to do peer-to-peer, keyboard-to-keyboard messaging with people who are also using the application through iGates. It allows me to spot. Spotting to soda is very important, especially when you're doing QRP work and you don't have any cellular data to send out your spots. That means sometimes you can get three contacts or 30 contacts. And another thing that we can do for safety is send text messaging and or email to our family members. So guys, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and get another picture of the ASU. So guys, as you already know, uh, we're in the shack today. I wanted to do um, a video outside, but it was kind of warm out there. So as you can see, we have the Yesu 857 Delta with the Abri two foot flexible tactical whip. As you guys already know, we can flip this down and we can put some tape around it and kind of make it look a lot less, a uh, little bit more portable. Now, as you guys can see, we're, we're on 144.390 doing some APRS work with this device. We have the DigiRig right here connected to the Microsoft Surface Go. And there are times when I'm really out and about, I want to connect it to my Raspberry Pi 4. Right here, if you guys can see, if I lean it kind of forward, we're going to go ahead and look at the TNC MobiLink 3. But from the software side, let's look at what we're doing from the software side of the radio. Well, as you guys can see, we're tracking a bunch of local stations that we're getting from our local eye gates. So right now, you can see we see a bunch of different stations right here. And basically, we're going to go ahead and just send our position out. Now, when we send our position, we get a good transmit. And we can go ahead and check ourselves out on the map. And in checking the map, we're going to see how many other stations that we're able to make peer-to-peer -peer communications with. And if you guys can see pretty good, there are a few good stations that are all around the Metro Atlanta area that are checking into the local uh, APRS. So how do you send text messages? How do you spot to soda? So one of the first things we do, I like to go into the messaging right here. And if you guys can see APRS to soda, this is one, at, one um, way that I get all of my data out to the, uh, the service. So right now I have W, I have just a, a generic um, uh, association with a frequency, with a band, with my test, I'm just basically testing APRS to soda. One of the major ways that we're gonna do that is using this APRS cheat sheet that I like to, uh, and I'll put in the comments and I'll maybe even put it on the screen. So basically if you wanna send email, email too. You go into the message, you put your email, you write your message and you hit send. SMS gate. Same, same scenario. Put your number or your family member's number, send your message, hit send. And once again, APRS to SOTA, you send the association, the reference, the frequency, the mode, SSB, FM, AM, CW, the call sign, and the comment, and you hit OK. Now, I don't want to start flooding um, the SOTA server with my information, um, the testing information, but I just wanted to share with you guys the valuable tools and lessons, I mean the valuable tools that the MobiLink TNC is. It provides us with an opportunity to do all types of very important comms. And another digital mode that we're going to be using with this particular device is, you guys know WSJTX, you guys know uh, FT8, you guys know Whisper, you guys know JSA Call, the wide variety, the suite 
of digital modes that we have. And that information is going to be coming from the DigiRig mobile. So now we've kind of talked about the digital modes, APRS, the DigiRig uh, and the like, but let's look at some of the antennas that we're using with this radio. Right now, guys, I am using the spark plug antenna by sparkpluggear.com. This is a 50 watt version. And man, with this particular uh, 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 setup right here, man, with a 61 foot of resonant wire, I've made contacts all over the world from Canada to France to Europe to Albania, SSB and QRP. I'm very proud to say that. Now, but the creme de la creme of antennas that I am using with this radio is going to be the Tactical Delta Loop by Chameleon. Man, I love this, this antenna right here. This is the Tactical Delta Loop. Two 17 foot telescoping whips with the, with the ground spike. And it has a 25 foot piece across. I love this antenna. And I also love this antenna for the fact that when I'm on a summit, I don't have a lot of real estate and I wanna do some DX, I can take this Invis setup and I can take it and I can go vertical. So now I have a 17 foot vertical whip with about a 31 uh, foot counterpoise for resonance. Cause I don't bring tuners when I'm out doing soda, personally guys. So the Chameleon Tactical Delta, uh, Delta Loop and vertical is one of my go-to antennas. As a matter of fact, it's my primary antenna when I'm operating with the Doomsday Radio for HF, for everything, SSB, digital, whatever it may be. All right, guys, so now let's go ahead and strip this radio naked. We're gonna bring the radio over to the workbench in one second. So let me go ahead and drop this antenna. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this antenna. Bring the radio over to the workbench. All right, guys, so we're going to be disconnecting this. So here we go. So now, as you know, the Doomsday Radio is self-contained. Taking it across my cables. And now we're bringing the Doomsday Radio over to the workbench. All right, guys, here is the exciting part. We're going to go ahead and take it out the Prick 117 bag. And in doing so, I have this battery inside the Molly kit here that's kind of running on the inside. So here's the deal, guys. This is what I love about this bag. We can uh, unzip it from the bottom. Come in closer. We can unzip it. And now here are where all of my connections are. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the battery because we're not using that anymore. All right, so once I disconnect that, guys, I'm gonna pull the radio out of the bag. And here is what we have. Once again, the Armalock TPA case. And this is how I am running everything, guys. As you can see, the MobileLink TNC is just basically blinking away. I am also running a six amp hour battery. Running a six amp hour battery right here. And with the six amp hour battery, this is pretty much, I can get a lot of work done with the seven, with the 857. Here we go, we're running a DigiRig, and here I have the DigiRig pretty much Velcroed to the top frame. I also have the MobiLink TNC Velcroed to the top. Now this device right here, it connects through Bluetooth to my phone, as you guys know. It's still connected through Bluetooth, but it isn't doing any PTT at the moment. MobiLink TNC, the TNC about the size of a matchbox. I love this thing, it's so functional. And you can also do WinLink with this uh, device itself. From here, guys, as you can see, I have my cat cables. I have my audio cables that are six pin mini din, as we talked about. The DigiLink, uh, the, this device right here, the TNC is connected here. And it also is connected. The cool thing about this radio, as many of you guys know, all of the ports that are associated with the um, outputs for the antennas, they come in here, they run up here, 
to these points right here. Now, I typically like to keep these uh, 239 connectors here that are also B and C. So I can also take my larger antennas and connect. And I can also come off when I want to go B and C and connect my B and C connectors right there. All right, guys. So as we look, we can go ahead and take a look at what this is all about. That's the radio. That's my antennas. Here are the digital devices that we're running that make this radio super ultra capable. And as you can see, the cabling has great potential. The cabling has great potential for being hidden. You know, this bag is pretty cool. The radio is pretty cool. And um, sometimes, like I say, we like to bring the Raspberry Pi 4 with the, uh, I like to call it the candy bar keyboard. Or, and or we'll bring in the Microsoft Surface Go. So, you know, um, I've been shooting this video a billion times, but sometimes you just got to get it out. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys liked it. And I was able to share some of the things that we're doing with this fully capable radio. Because we always have to remember, all band, all mode, QRO, man pack, fully capable, communications, sense them. That's it. That's it. I mean, it doesn't get... Uh, any better than that. I have an IC705, 